Good day everyone, this is Maria Lourdes de la Cruz, your reporter for today's video. So today we are going to discuss all about the Asher model. So before we go on to our discussions, we are going to state the following objectives below, which in this lesson, we are able to analyze learners, state objectives, select methods, media and materials, utilize media and materials, require learner participation, and evaluation and revise. So without further ado, let us proceed. So what is the Asher instructional design model? So according to Henrik and Melinda, who created the Asher model in 1999, it is well known as Instructional Design Guide incorporating multimedia and technology to improve learning environment. So in this lesson, we are going to know about what is the Asher mod model and how it is related to the learning environment with the integration of technology. That is from a constructivist perspective, which means that learning is from an experience itself, which that builds the prior learning or the prior knowledge to build it into something what was meant in the further acknowledgement. And also, in the constructivist perspective, Learning is not just taking on uh, normal information, but by learning and experience. So, in its name, as an acronym for its components that we'll see below. So, each corresponding letters of the Asher is its components itself. So these are the model's six components, which is the A-S-S-U-R-E. The first letter will be A, which stands for Analyze Learners. So the Asher models relies heavily on learners, and its core is designed based on their needs. This is why the first step involves identifying the characteristics of the learners, those can be their age, existing knowledge, education level, learning specificities, and a variety of other key details that are usually gathered through service and surveys and assessments. So as we can see, here in the first component, which is the word itself or the phrase itself is to analyze learners. So since the Asher mo model relies to the learners and, and this its design is to base on their needs which that persists in the following compo the following characteristics of the learners which from age in their knowledge their educational level learning specificities and also from the other component other key details that are from surveys and assessments so in the asher model it is very crucial to identify or analyze the needs of the learners in order to design their learning environment based on their needs and the next letter is s which state which stands for state objectives so you can set the objectives based on the smart method so they can be specific measurable achievable relevant and time bound this means that you should be able to know precisely what skills and knowledge the learners are going to acquire during the specific period from the word smart itself it is time bound and additionally you should set the realistic goals that is that related to the achievable part of smart method 
so you must have a realistic goal that is totally achievable and relevant to the lessons to achieve the best learning outcome so as the smart method has the relevant component itself so you will align to the specific objectives of your lesson in order to have the best outcome for your students next is letter s also that stands for select methods decide which instruction methods instruction methods that you'll use to deliver the content for example if your lessons are more instructor led choosing lectures presentations and other dis demonstrations are ideal options like presenting a ppt um, discussions also um, those kind of methods and on the other hand if they are more learner centered and you should opt for discussions and group activities which it allows them to have peer discussions um, brainstorming activities which allows them to group with their other peers and to have a more method that they are capable of the next will be you that stands for utilize media and materials you should review the technology and other media to make sure they will run smoothly during your lessons and prepare them accordingly. In addition, you need to prepare the teaching environment. Lastly, inform the learners about the entire process including the material, objectives, assessment type. So most often, if you use a media or a website that is suitable for you as a creator content creator content like for instance you are using a quizlet so in the quizlet website mostly it is game type um quizzes which allows you to create your design for your website that is more um fun for your students and it is it has time duration so you must inform your learners about that process and also the materials and their objectives and what kind of assessment type would it be um exam fill in the blanks or quiz type maybe those things and also in order to utilize media you must prepare your technology or other media that make sure that they run smoothly which you must know that this is functional before you will have a difficulties at the end of your class Next is letter R that stands for Require Learner Participation. Determine how you're going to actively engage in your learners in the teaching process. For instance, if you can establish mandatory participation in class discussions or ask them to guide the lesson themselves by asking questions or presenting themes for further analysis, you can also consider how they're going to absorb the material. So, in this component, as a teacher, you must know how to engage your learners in teaching process to make the learning environment more engaging with the two-way communication process, which you as a teacher, you're communicating with your students and them as a students is at the same way. So you will know there will be feedbacks or maybe there will be a communication, interactive communication in the learning process. And also, you must establish a mandatory discussions in class or maybe you can have a 
question and answer or maybe you can have a reporting where they will present their themselves and then after the specific period of reporting they will ask them on how they had their analysis and also you can determine in how they are going to or how you're going to consider them to absorb the material and next is letter E which stands for evaluate and revise Evol first you must evaluate your teaching strategies and the media the technology used and how you implemented them also you should determine the lessons and learners met your objectives in the overall experience cater their individual needs so first you must have to evaluate everything if your teaching strategies is reliable if it's effective and the media you use it is, is it is it relevant or is it significant to your lessons also the te technology if it's destruction or maybe it's good for them and how should you implement them if you are the, in the use of them? And if this, if this setting of strategies doesn't meet your objectives, or does the overall experience of this cater your students' needs, then if not, you have them to revise. That is the purpose of evaluate and revise. If the strategies is matched to the likings or the objectives, then you have to adopt it. Or maybe if not, you have to revise it to make it more reliable to your lessons. And also, feedback from your learners is important in the steps to help you with your analysis if it catered them if if this kind of setting is what they want if this kind of setting is effective to them if in their learning process if the learning is effective to them if they absorb something in your class then you might consider the evaluate and revise so how can you apply Azure to e-learning now, the Azure model can be used when designing e-learning courses as it ensures personalized, engaging, and learning experience for every member of your audience. So, by the integration of media and learning, the Azure can be very, very crucial in e-learning because it is the strategies that you will apply in the platform you're going to create that ensures if it caters the learner's needs so you must first analyze the learner and design lessons to fit their needs and preference as i've said you have to fit those needs in order to match their preferences before you design your e-learning process then you use your preferred learning management system to state the objectives of the lessons and deliver the chosen multimedia and support resources whether it would be google classroom or maybe other websites that you use for educational purpose so you can create your e-learning next like videos interactive quizzes so you will have this um, following activities in your website or maybe your platform like videos interactive quizzes your video presentation of your lessons and you will have interactive quizzes which after the videos they will have quizzes discussion forums like in the google meet 
you will have discussion forums from other places but staying home like using augmented or virtual reality you can also leverage your LMS to collect user data from learner participation like information time spent on the platform and etc what is the more what is the more crucial for the uh, what is the significance of this is also because in the digital world you world you can have a digital footprint in everything like if the learner has participated if they've logged in their information so you will know who is the person answering this and there's time spent the duration of screen time in the platform and more so the benefits of Azure so you can focus on learners because the Azure model provides systematic approach to design lessons. This means that it ensures the instructional materials focus in achieving specific learning outcomes and that the learners are actively engaged in the learning process. Also, learners always know that they're expected to learn and how. The next benefit will be to varied instructional methods. The model encourages the use of variety of instructional methods like technology and media offer virtually endless options to choose from. This optimizes the, the learning process, make it more individualized and relevant. This freedom of choice allows designers to create the lessons catering to different learning needs and preference. Also, it is important you can know the the importance of evaluation by emphasizing evaluation and revision the model gives you the opportunity constantly to improve and update your content input from learners as well as the assessment and help designers create the experiences that stick and monitor the learner performance as they progress so in conclusion, the Azure model gives instructional designers the power to create materials that are effective, engaging, and tailored to the needs of learners. Using this approach, you can create high quality content that promotes active learning and maps out the entire process so that learners know where they're heading and how they've come. You can also explore the other ID strategies in our comprehensive list of instructional design models and theories. So that would be all. Thank you for listening.